Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Miranda here again with Redline Exotics. And today I'm gonna to talk about how I switched my ferrets onto a raw diet. I switched them in like about two weeks, just under a month if you count some of the other phases I went through. But there are a few different methods out there. It is possible, it's really hard for a lot of ferrets, especially older ferrets. This was the biggest thing that was keeping me from trying to do it, but honestly, in my personal experience, I got really lucky and my ferrets switched right to it without any real issues. And like I said, it took like two weeks, two months, not even to get onto eating whole prey items. So it went way easier than I expected. So that's why I want to talk about how I did it and some tricks that you can use to try and switch your ferrets onto raw. I'm also going to talk about why, how I do it, what I feed them, and would I ever go back to feeding them kibble. First, let's talk about what kibble I was feeding my ferrets before. I was feeding them the Waisung. Um, I've had baby for almost four years now. December will be four years. I've had her for three, three and a half years now. So, and I remembered Waisung from back in the day. Um, I went without ferrets for a really long time. When I got baby, I hadn't had a ferret in several years. Um, it just it just took a long time for me to be ready to have them again because it was really, really hard losing my first ferrets, especially Smokey. Uh, so I just wasn't ready for a while to have ferrets again. And then I became ready to, and that's how I got baby. Anyways, I'm not gonna go off into that story because I could go on and on and on about that. Um, I'm just gonna talk about, okay, I decided to get ferrets again. I got baby, December of 2017, yeah. Now we have 11. Um, and they're all raw fed now. I switched them beginning of this year. It's May of 2021 now. And I switched them, I wanna say, I had them completely switched by the end of February, something like that. I can go back and figure it out. Anyways, they've, they've been eating raw for a couple months now and um, they were eating Waisung before. And every now and then I would actually give them some raw egg and I'd give them a little salmon oil here and there. And Rascal would take certain treats, but the others wouldn't take treats, they had no they were typical ferrets, they didn't recognize anything other than their kibble as something to eat. Why did I want to switch my ferrets? Let's just start with that. Um, I need to stop saying um. <laughs> Why? So like I said before, I was feeding them Waisung. Waisung I had remembered from feeding my original ferrets. When I very first got my very first ferrets, we followed what the pet store said and fed them Marshall. Um, and then I started doing more research and getting a little bit more mature. I got my first ferret when I was eight years old. I realized we should not be feeding them that. So I had started feeding them Waisung. And this was a long time ago when Waisung was recommended and it was said to be, at the time, the most appropriate kibble for ferrets. And I just kind of went along with it and I figured, okay, if I'm going to feed them kibble, I better feed them the best. Fast forwarding years later, I get baby and I figured, okay, why sung? That's what, that's what was the best before. I did a little bit of quick little research on it and I said, saw that why song was still considered to be a really good kibble for ferrets, recommended by a lot of, a lot of people. So I just kind of blindly went along with it. And then recently I started doing more research and digging a little bit deeper. I read the ingredients on Waisung and I was like, wow, this has got a lot of unnecessary crap in it. Um, I learned a little bit more about nutrition recently. I'm older, wiser, I've done more research and I just recognize the fact that it's not appropriate food for ferrets. So I said, all right, also, I kind of had like a midlife crisis situation, if you will, where I came to the realization that baby's gonna be four in September. She's almost an old lady. She like kind of is an old lady for a ferret. 
and that makes me sad. I'm not trying to say that baby's gonna die soon or anything like that. Um, I hope that she lives a really long time. I hope that she breaks the world record for the oldest ferret, but I highly doubt that will happen given she's from Marshall. But yeah, it basically just kind of hit me like, wow, baby's gonna be four in September. Sassy's gonna be four next March. My little babies are growing up and they're getting old and there's a good chance that I'm gonna be dealing with multiple uh, insulinoma ridden ferrets within the next couple years. And that's heartbreaking. Ferrets in general are really tough pets to have just because of how unhealthy they can be, the diseases that they are prone to. It really does suck. It's not, it's not fair at all. They deserve so much better. They deserve to be bred better. They deserve to be fed better. But they just deserve better. Um, and that's what I wanted to do for my guys. I wanted to commit. But yeah, I just wanted to get them off kibble and get them onto an appropriate diet. And I was ready to commit to it. I sat down. I did a, a lot more research. I refreshed myself. I spent several hours and days and hours of the days on the internet looking up as much as I could and looking at all the different options I had for reading, feeding them raw and set up a game plan. I said, all right, I'm gonna switch them. And these, these guys are gonna be raw fed ferrets however long it takes. If it takes a year, if it takes a month, if it takes three months, whatever I gotta do, they're gonna be raw fed. And it took me like two weeks. <laughs> So you might be wondering, Miranda, how the heck did you do it? Please tell me now, I wanna switch my ferrets. Stop rambling, tell me how to do it. Okay, first, I just wanna say this is the method that I used and this might not work for everyone. Honestly speaking, people have just offered their ferrets raw meat, ferrets that have never been fed raw before and they just ate it. I wasn't that lucky, unfortunately, but some people are. So don't be afraid to just try that. Get, I mean, don't put a whole bunch of meat out that's gonna go to waste, but try offering them a couple little things. You never know. Um, you can try like a little pinky mice, pieces of chicken breast. Chicken tends to be the most receptive off the bat, the easiest food to get used to for ferrets. Probably because most kibbles and stuff that are, that that you might be feeding them would be made from chicken. But I basically, I took things slow with them because I didn't want to, I did not want to get myself frustrated and potentially try to give up. I didn't want to stress out my ferrets. I didn't want to hurt their tummies, anything like that. I wanted to take things slow. I understood the fact that my ferrets aren't babies and I went in ready to fail, basically. I went in anticipating it being really hard so i figured i will do this in the easiest most painless way i possibly can and this is what i came up with first i took their food that they were eating their waisung kibble and i started wetting that food and making it softer and making it kind of like a soup before them i took their kibble and i put it in a bowl and i filled it with warm water and i let it soak and absorb the water and then make like a mush, mushy soup for them. For the Y song, it did take a while. It took a long time to soak that kibble with water to the point where it would turn into a soup. Like it took forever. I had to start blending it. I've done this method before at the pet store that I used to work at where the baby ferrets, we took their food, their Marshall Kibble and did this technique with the babies, made it into a soup for them. Um, that food only took a few minutes soaking warm water to turn into a soup. The Y song took forever. I'm not really sure if it's because it is a higher quality food or what. I don't really know. I just know it took forever. Oh my gosh. I had to soak this food. I had to prep their dinner in the morning, start soaking it in the morning so that it would absorb enough water and become soft enough for them to, for me to mix it up and make it into a soup for them. 
Oh, I did this for about a week or so. I just got them used to eating their food in a soft, soupy format. And then after about a week or so of that, oh, hi, Ozzy. Oh, where's my little guy? Where's Ozzy? Well, Ozzy's not feeling well today. He's got an appointment to go back to the vet. He was super blown up this morning, you guys. Oh my goodness. His allergies are not, not good. And I gave him some more Benadryl. He's gone down a little bit, but I feel horrible. I'm knocking him out with Benadryl every day just to try and keep him comfortable and not itchy and not be swollen but it's still not working 100%. He's still kind of swollen, so he's going back to the vet where hopefully we can figure something out for him. I feel, I just feel awful. Oh yeah, so I did that for about a week or so. Got them used to eating their food in like a soupy kind of format. And then I made a soup for them out of chicken, chicken liver, chicken heart, and bone meal powder. Now, this is a little transitional soup recipe that you can find online on the Holistic Ferret Forum. I will leave a link right down in the description so you can click on it and find it yourself. Now, this is not a complete diet by any means. It's better than nothing. It will work for a short per period of time and it does make for an easy transitional soup for them. So I did this, I made them a nice little chicken, raw chicken soupy and started adding that a little bit at a time to their Waisung soup. So for the first couple nights, I did, I added about like a quarter of the chicken soup into their Waisung and I watched them eat, made sure everybody was eating. And a couple of them were kind of like, something's not right about this, something's different, but I'm gonna eat it anyways. <laughs> And then slowly over about another, the course of another week, I added a little more of my chicken soup, took away the Waisung soup, and within a week they were eating just straight chicken soup as it was. And I was pretty happy. No Waisung added whatsoever, just straight raw chicken soup. Everybody was eating it. A few of my ferrets I did have to use the little boop the snoop method, if you will. There's another method I'll talk about real quick where um, this might sound kind of crazy to some people, but you really do have to teach these guys that what you're trying to feed them is in fact food and is edible. They can be a little bit stubborn. So some people have to go as far as giving their ferrets a little scruff and putting the piece of meat in their mouth and letting them, they're gonna chew and bite and try to spit it out but in the process, they might realize that, hey, this is okay, I can eat it, I'm not dying. I didn't have to go that severe with mine. What I did was with the chicken soup for some of my guys who were a little more hesitant on what was going on, I just got some on my finger and put it on their nose, lip area, and they had to lick it off their face and they realized, okay, I can eat this and it's not that bad. But honestly, I only had to do that a couple times. I spent the big switch day where I wasn't adding any Y song to their food, I made sure it was a day that I was going to be home all day. So I can kind of do this throughout the day, give them little bits. I served them a little bit for breakfast and then I took it away. And then a few hours later, I brought them a little midday snack. We did this. And then honestly, by the time dinner time came around, everybody went to their soup and lapped it up just like they would have done with their kibble in the past. So it really wasn't that hard at all. After I got them onto that, I gradually just started making the soup a little less soupy and a little more chunky. And then I was feeling a little crazy and I threw some chicken wings at them. Not literally throwing chicken wings at them, but you get what I mean. I gave them some chicken wings and boy, did they love chicken wings. They definitely take after their mama, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so they started eating the chicken wings, even Baby, my almost four-year-old, and Chaos, who was like almost three, uh, or maybe three, I don't really know how old Chaos is, they started eating bone-in chicken wings and crunching the meat off the bone, and I watched them, 
bite down on the bones and eat them and lick the marrow out and all that. And they've been loving it. Absolutely loving it. So I was like, okay, this is cool. My guys eat bone and meat. And basically, yeah, for the last month or so, well, ever since I fully switched them, I've just been adding new things here and there. I added some mice into the mix, some chicks, pork neck bones, anything I can give them for variety I've been adding to the mix. What do I feed them now? I am feeding them whole mice, pinkies occasionally, chicks, quail, gerbil, rabbit, chicken, obviously they get chicken wings, they love turkey necks, anything that I can find at the store that's bone in and appropriate for them, like that giant chunks of beef, but like pork neck bones, sometimes I find those in the store and I find them in small enough pieces that the ferrets can have them and they do really like that. They'll eat a little bit of salmon. I gave them a tilapia, a whole tilapia the other day. They weren't really, um, they weren't, weren't super thrilled by that, but they've had salmon fillets before and I'm gonna try offering them whole smelt, which is a really tiny fish soon. And the last question is, would I ever go back to feeding them kibble? And the answer is no, definitely not. Um, if I could not do raw anymore in the sense of either whole prey, grinds, or franken prey. Um, if I had to go back to a commercial food, I would still look for a commercial raw. I definitely wouldn't feed them kibble just because it has a bunch of things in it that ferrets cannot digest. Known ingredients that they can't just... I just wouldn't. I just wouldn't. I really regret the years that I have spent feeding them kibble, and I would definitely never go back to it. I would do a freeze-dried raw or a regular frozen raw commercial food. I would prefer the regular frozen raw before going to a freeze-dried raw option. But yeah, I will just never go back to feeding them kibble because in order to make kibble be kibble, be these little round nuggets, requires ingredients that are harmful and inappropriate for ferrets to be eating. Ingredients that they just simply cannot digest and are known to cause cancer. So I'm good, I'll pass. I don't even feed Enzo kibble anymore. He also needs raw now. That's that, I think. That's everything for today's video. Um, I'll go into more in-depth videos on what exactly I feed them. I'd like to do a meal prep video just because I enjoy watching those a lot. I just really suck at meal prepping and I kind of just figure out what I'm going to feed them for breakfast and dinner, like, in the moment. I have not yet <laughs> done a weekly meal prep for my ferrets, and I really should, <laughs> because it makes things less confusing, and it also helps with budgeting, but we're still kind of new to it. I've been figuring out what they like and what they don't like, and learning how to do it myself and how to prep, so, yeah, we're, get we're getting better. We're getting, we're getting there. But yeah, so thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.